February of 1957, police in Philadelphia discovered something shocking. The battered body of a young boy stuffed inside a cardboard box and dumped by the side of a road just outside the city. When Philadelphia police discovered the body after a local college student called in a tip, they had no idea it was the start of a 65-year mystery. In December 2022, Philadelphia police announced that the boy in the box had been identified as Joseph Augustus Sorelli. They also informed the public that while Sorelli's killer may have died long ago, the criminal investigation is far from over. On February the 25th, 1957, police discovered a cardboard box on the side of a country road near Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Officers found the naked body of a young boy partially wrapped in an inexpensive flannel blanket inside the box, which had once contained a bassinet purchased from J.C. Penney. The child's body was covered in bruises, and a medical examiner later determined that the boy died from multiple blows to the head. Detectives tried in vain to identify the child, whom the media dubbed the boy in the box and America's unknown child. Investigators believe the child's hair was cut off around the time of his death. When they found the boy, tufts of his hair were all over his body. However, the medical examiner stated that the person who cut the boy's hair did so in a hurry. According to reports, the child's forehead had four distinct bruises and signs of a cerebral hemorrhage. The cause of death, according to law enforcement, could have been accidental. Those who clipped his hair may have inadvertently applied too much pressure whilst holding the child's head in place. Soon after, a Philadelphia barber said he was positive he cut the child's hair about a week before police discovered him. The barber maintained that the boy had come into his shop with his older brother and left unharmed. The barber then directed police to the Strawberry Mansion neighborhood near Fairmont Park, where he claimed the boy resided. Investigators followed the lead but found nothing else. The doctors who examined the unidentified boy found numerous signs of long-term abuse. With the help of x-rays, a doctor determined the child had probably been between 3 and 5 years old when he died, but he weighed just 30 pounds and stood at about 40 and a half inches tall. The boy had the body of a two-year-old child, and x-rays revealed a rested growth. The child's body was covered in bruises, his lips were dry and bloody, and his ribs were visible through his skin due to emaciation. Examiners also discovered evidence that the child had an eye infection that had been treated with medication before his death. The medical examiner was unable to determine the exact time of death, stating that it could have occurred days or weeks before the discovery. While police did not find the boy until February the 25th, 1957, Frederick Benoni allegedly discovered his body the day before. Benoni, a 27-year-old LaSalle college student, told police he came across the boy while chasing a rabbit, but he did not call authorities because he thought the body was a doll. When he learned that a New Jersey child who later proved not to be the boy in the box had gone missing, the college student said he decided to call the police the next day. 
Investigators eventually discovered that Benoni had not reported finding the body because he was spying on girls at a nearby school, not chasing a rabbit as he had claimed. When police discovered the boy in the box, they assumed someone would come forward to provide them with the child's identity. However, when no one contacted the authorities to offer the boy's name, Philadelphia officials used a variety of different methods to try to uncover the child's identity. Authorities in Philadelphia created a poster featuring the child's face and providing information about the child's physical appearance and the items discovered near his body. They distributed flyers throughout Philadelphia and handed them out on the street. While the poster generated numerous tips, it did not assist the police in determining who the child was. An unknown perpetrator abducted a two-year-old boy named Stephen Craig DeMann from an East Meadow, New York grocery store on October the 31st, 1955, less than two years before Philadelphia police discovered the boy in the box. People questioned whether the boy in the box was DeMann because of their similar ages and physical characteristics when authorities found him. Following up on this lead, investigators discovered DeMann had a broken arm before his disappearance. The boy in the box did not appear to have suffered the same fracture. Furthermore, their footprints did not match, leading investigators to conclude that the boy in the box was not the man. Law enforcement compared the DNA from the boy in the box to biological evidence collected from DeMann's sister in 2003 and determined there was no connection between the two children. In 1998, 41 years after his body was discovered near that country road near Philadelphia by police, officials exhumed the boy in the box to collect DNA evidence from his remains. Forensic analysis were able to extract mitochondrial DNA from one of the child's teeth and used his DNA profile to rule out potential living relatives of the boy. After no one came forward to claim the boy's body, authorities paid for his burial in a potter's field in 1957. Following the extraction of DNA from his remains, city officials instructed that he be buried in Philadelphia's Ivy Hill Cemetery. On November the 11th, 1998, the boy was laid to rest in a donated casket. The Philadelphia Police Department announced in November 2022 that the boy had been identified adding that criminal charges could still be filed. Police in Philadelphia confirmed that after years and years of DNA analysis cross-referenced with genealogical information, police know the boy's name. The child's identity was finally revealed to the public one month later. At a press conference, Commissioner Danielle Outlaw said that the boy in the box was Joseph Augustus Sorelli, born on January the 13th, 1953, in West Philadelphia. More family information was kept confidential for the time being out of respect for his living relatives. As the case remains unsolved, Captain John Smith of the Philadelphia Police Department stated, We have suspicions about who might be responsible, but it would be irresponsible of me to share these suspicions because this is still an ongoing and active criminal investigation. A $20,000 reward is being offered for information leading to the arrest and conviction of a suspect in this case. The Philadelphia Inquirer published the findings of an investigation into Joseph's biological parents in January of 2023. 
based on DNA evidence, family trees, and historical research, investigators determined that Joseph's biological father was Augustus J. Gus Zarelli, and his mother was Mary Elizabeth Betsy Abel. Betsy would have been 21 years old when she gave birth to Joseph, and Gus would have been five years older. There appears to be no formal relationship between the two, and it is speculated that Betsy gave Joseph up for adoption. According to Dan Bush, an attorney for the Zarelli family, neither Gus nor his family were aware of Abel's pregnancy or Joseph himself. Bush stated, No credible allegation has been made by anyone, including the Philadelphia Police Department, that their father knew of the birth of this child or anything to do with the life of this child, and certainly nothing even remotely suggesting that he knew or had anything to do with any harm having come to this child. A relative of Betsy Abel also claims that Abel would not have harmed baby Joseph in any way. Gus died in 2014 at the age of 87, and Betsy died in her early 60s in 1991. This is a heartbreaking story. I followed this story for years. And even though we now know the name of this child, we still have so many unanswered questions. I would love to hear what your theories are, so please list them below. If you would like to know more about Stephen DeMann, who disappeared on Halloween from a grocery store, I have made a video about him as well. I will list it below.